Ladies and gentlemen, back in the day there used to be a YouTube show by a creator called iDubs called Content Cop. Hey there folks, I'm the Content Cop. I'm here to make sure everyone's content is up to par, and if it's not, I'm, I'll bring them to justice. The humour of Content Cop, well, it was a product of its time. People spoke a bit differently back then. More colourful metaphors. Ooh, that was pretty gay of me. That's simply the way they talk here. However, I feel that the lessons that Content Cop taught are still quite relevant today. Much like, say, the Christian Bible, just because something's a bit on the old school side doesn't mean you throw it away and disregard it entirely. Enter Lord of Patriarchy. We've spoken about him a few times here on the channel. Lord of Patriarchy recently made a reaction video to Angry Video Game Nerd's latest video. I didn't realise that Angry Video Game Nerd was still on the go, but apparently he is. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm going to be doing a reaction from the latest AVGN episode, A Boy and His Blob. Let's see if James Rolfe still has it. Uh, I haven't watched this, so you're in it with me. Our boy, Lord of Patriarchy, decided to react to Angry Video Game Nerd's video by playing his video in its entirety. I'll show the video in its entirety rather than just showing clips of it. And literally only offering one single input of about 30 seconds worth of hardly even commentary, more like a, just an observation about his own life. Maybe you thought you were going to outdo the other reaction channels by improving your video quality? Oh no, no, that's just going to stay at 720p. I can't go any higher. I couldn't be fucked. I upload four videos a day. You know how long it's going to take if it's 1080p? I'll kill myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, very little of creative value was added to Angry Video Game Nerd's video. In fact, I would say that this one isn't even a, it's not even a fair use. Maybe you made a bad thumbnail or two. Uh, maybe you didn't make a thumbnail at all and it was just a still frame of your video because you were either retarded or you couldn't be fucked open Photoshop because you had no passion at what you do. A video theft, a, an act of piracy? That's maybe too strong a term. I think essentially this one would show the basis of how not to make a reaction video, how not to make a commentary video. So let's react to his reaction. We'll uh, we'll speed run our way through this, ladies and gentlemen. We'll actually do a bit of creativeness. In fact, the amount of commentary I've offered so far far outweighs the amount of commentary that he offered in the initial viewing of this video by the angry video game nerd. Holy shit. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna sit on my bed. I'm gonna sit on the end of my bed. I'm gonna set up the camera and I'm gonna watch some fucking videos. Fuck editing. Fuck that shit. What am I, a faggot? Dude, are you gonna edit your video? No, what do I look fucking gay? brand new Ninja Turtles movie came out this summer, so I was once again feeling nostalgic for the movies I grew up with, but they weren't streaming anywhere online. Thanks to ExpressVPN, though, I had... Oh, hold on, I guess I'm gonna get over the... It would appear that AVGN, James Rolfe, is being sponsored to make this video. He's showing a, a sponsored ad here. Thing is, Lord of Patriarchy is choosing to not show that sponsored ad segment. Not only are we just going to steal someone else's video, we're going to remove the uh, part of it that they're getting a commission to show an ad spot for. Thankfully, James Rolfe's link for the sponsored product does actually show here in the, the final article which Lord of Patriarchy has made. So that's a good thing, at least James Rolfe's links are being shown. Okay. Get that shit in the mail, and it was like, hot damn. It was this issue right here. It was the- Alright, hold on, let me back him up. Alright. Cinemassacre, or by clicking the link in the description below. 
Back in the day, it was all about Nintendo power. You get that shit in the mail, and it was like hot damn. It was this issue right here. It was the first spring of the 90s, and this is when I first heard of the game. But I'm not talking about that one on the cover. We're going deeper into those pages, further into the ass crack of gaming history. And there it was, a boy in his blob, having already been released in 89. I didn't know if this game had anything to do with the 50s monster movie, The Blob, but one thing was clear, it had a lot to do with jelly beans. I never forgot this page, seeing all those different colors. I didn't process what it all meant, but it definitely made me want jelly beans. Then I saw that illustration of that kid dropping jelly beans into the mouth of a white slimer looking blob dude with his mouth gaping like yum 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 yum. What the hell was this game about? The designer and programmer was David Crane, who worked at Atari and became one of the co-founders of Activision. He made graphics for Kaboom, but he was best known for Pitfall and Pitfall 2, The Lost Caverns, which was loosely remade on the NES as Super Pitfall. I already talked about that one, Super Shitfall. And I very briefly touched upon Boy's Blob in my wishlist episode part two. But this game is such a bizarre curiosity piece. It's unique, puzzling, and equally fascinating. So I think it might be worth playing for the whole game. Or not. Oh no. I wonder if Lord of Patriarchy's beard stroking could be construed as a form of communication. He's communicating using Morse code by beard stroking. Not Indiana Jones. Why did it have to be Indiana Jones? The title font, the music, it's a full-fledged indie spoof. Yeah, so the game starts much. up, and if you were a kid when this came out, you didn't have half a clue what you were supposed to be doing. I rented it from the video store, and while I might have been too impatient to always read the manuals, keep in mind, it was the video store! They never came with the manuals because someone always rented it and never returned the manual. Yeah, I mean, it begs the question. I will say this, the video store I used to frequent in, in uh, my childhood, um, they always they had a separate scan code for the uh, instruction book, and if you didn't have it, you paid a fine. That was the thing about video games in any capacity around here. The manuals would be on displays in the store, almost like uh, like bookshelves in a library. The actual games in the boxes themselves were kept in the back of the stores in locked cabinets. Who are all these people going around snatching NES manuals? They still have them? Bring them back! Yeah, you can cleanse yourself of your sins, walk into the side of the old video store, whether it's a blood dramatic bar or a just walk in there, put that manual on the floor, and walk out. A new person. So you just had to mess around. You select jelly beans your inventory, you throw them in a white slime, and what happens? He transforms. The honey flavor turns into a hummingbird. Apple turns into a jack. Apple jack. Vanilla is umbrella. Cinnamon is blowtorch. Um, like the blowtorch in Home Alone. The movie. Like cinema. Not cinnamon. Cinnamon, man. Okay, anyway, this is a lot of fun. You'll probably kill 30 minutes just trying out all the jelly beans in different places to see what happens and how it's going to back your ass in the environment. So, Blob character, officially named Blobbert, is from outer space and must have been partially inspired by Blobbert. There yet, the stuff. Yeah, remember the stuff. But actually, I heard that in prints and interviews that inspiration was a handbar air cartoon called Earth Boys, specifically the character's blue complete. But it also draws a very strong connection to a certain A's movie where a young kid becomes friends with an alien visitor who also needs candy. You know what we've been talking about? Back in it. Blobbert may not seem totally original, but the idea of an AI controlled character following you around was trailblazing. At the time, this was state of the art futuristic mind blowing shit. It's like I'm playing a game with a friend, but there's no friend here. There's nobody else here besides me. The same controller isn't even plugged in. What's going on, man? Whether or not Blobbert is a very good AI control character is a whole other question. If you think about it, the entire game is an escort mission. Instead of being free to move around as you please, you have to keep stopping and waiting for him to catch up. Come on, man, move your slow ass. Well, there is one way to catch up. You drop a ketchup flavored jelly bean. <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. So, what's the goal here? Well, Blobbert comes from the planet Blobbert, which is ruled by evil emperor who forces everyone to eat only junk food. Blobbert needs a boy's help to defeat the emperor. The only way to defeat him is with healthy food, more specifically vitamins. Where do you get the vitamins? The vitamin store. You need money. How do you get the money? By exploring underground caverns looking for treasure chests and diamonds. Wow. How do all this stuff get here? Did a bunch of pirates hide all? In this area, we became a populated city. Whoever built the subway tunnels and sewers never noticed there's a shit ton of treasures. The diamonds alone are as big as a kid. If you found just one of those, then you found the largest diamonds in the world. And not just one, a whole bunch of them. All by a jar of vitamins. Imagine walking into a CVS. You grab the vitamins from the counter, bring it to the cashier. Okay, and then BAM! You slam that fucking treasure chest on the counter. There's one gold going to spin around so as you're running around searching for these treasures, you'll notice there's a surprising lack of enemies. I mean, this is an NES game after all. Should there be a million things trying to kill you? A screen after screen of nothing. The truth is, this game could use more time to finish developing. The story goes that Dave Crane had only six weeks to finish it. Well, I think this game took way too much inspiration for PT. The only thing I can really consider an enemy is some kind of worm, but it doesn't even come after you. If you don't hear it, it's your fault. You could keep your hands off that treasure, huh? Then there's a spider web without any spider enemy whatsoever. The spider left that web for you just so you can run into it, die, and feel like a dumbass. You gotta use a blowtorch. All the other hazards are environmental. If you fall from too high, well, oops, fuck that one up. You gotta use the umbrella. Water, well, that was given. It wouldn't be an NES game if water didn't kill you. You gotta use a cold beam to make a bubble, which is hard to control in the submarine or from gym. But watch out for slag lights and slag fights. Those are fatal to touch as well. So the game makes you feel bad because it's you who did. Nothing's really out to kill you. You're out to kill yourself. Idiot. So here, I'm gonna use a punch flavor jelly to turn water into a hole. <laughs> Get it? Punch hole? Mother fucker! But you can't use the umbrella if you already use the hole. So your only other option is to have some kind of special sixth sense of mentally detected exist beyond the boundary of the screen. In other words, it's a fucking guessing game. No, uh, no, no! I can tell you what kind of hole this game belongs in. Another game is tangerine to make a trampoline. Well, this thing's based on momentum. The more you bounce, the higher you go. Oh man, hit the ceiling. Can I get back down? How do I get back down? Ah, oh, you fuck! Get up there! You see what I'm trying to do, right? Oh, oh, oh! Arrgh. Get up there, any way possible. Is the hair to the right? No, no, no! Oh, come on! All right, just let it bounce over left. Go left. Go left. Son of a fucking bitch! This is some of the most <laughs> elegantly designed torture I've ever seen. Use the bridge to make a ladder. Oh, come on, I can't go up there. I'm gonna try off the side. Yeah, I'll be not kidding. It has to be at the perfect spot. Let's try here. What? Oh, that was some cheap bullshit. This is a prime example of a trial and error game. It only sets you up for failure, and the only course of action is to fail over and over again until you get lucky. It's also a major way to fuck you go game. You keep running around like an asshole. And of course, there's no fucking internet, so you have to consult Nintendo Power. Oh, that's cool. They lay out the whole map with numbers, so you just follow the numbers, right? Number nine. Stop being dead, Eddie. This route leads to nowhere you want to be. Is the head to the left and numbers 10 and 11? Oh, that fucking takes a piss on me. Who printed that? I want to know who. But nothing compares to this treasure at the very bottom. It's heavily guarded by slag mites. You have to be joking. Just try to go near it. Just fucking try. And that's it. You're done. I approach it from every conceivable angle. I've determined that you cannot get this treasure unless you die. 
I guess that counts, right? Your dad fucking got the treasure. That's a pirate shit right there. But here's the thing. You don't need all the treasures. You just need enough. So fuck the underground. Go back to the streets. Go to the fighting store and cash those treasures in. Now you got vitamins and you're ready to head to the planet. Why won't you have to take out the emperor? Use the root beer beans to make a rocket. Rocket. Then launch yourself off. Okay, now let me ask a question. This boy dies when he touches water. But he breathes in fucking space. Now we're on Guadalupe. And remember when I said there wasn't enough enemies or things trying to kill you? Well, fuck myself. God damn. Is there enough shit in the way now? Maybe. Just maybe. First, it's the dancing marshmallows. They just go up and down, up and down. But then they start doing these funky patterns. Kind of like the jellyfish in Jaws. They keep getting crazier and crazier. Next, they come these cherry bombs. Don't even worry about the pattern because they'll just blow up and kill you anyway. Even if you try to outrun them, just hold right without stopping, they will still kill you. Might as well put down the controller and rethink your life. Even if you're not on the same screen, they can still kill you. There is a trick. Use a coconut bean to make a coconut overball. Throw it off screen. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fuck! You can throw that coconut. Wait all day. But as soon as you decide to go after it, death is waiting. It's a very specific kind of throw. In a certain place, with a start. You know you got it when the screen changes to follow it. Wow, that's one hell of a throw. By doing this, you clear all the enemies. But how would you know to do that? The answer is get the power. Nintendo power. Next is cornfield. Yeah, great. Now you're being attacked by popcorn. Oh, we now score the band. Then you're inside some candy factory. It's like Willy Wonka's factory, but even more evil. Two naughty, nasty little children gone. Three good, sweet little children left. There's marshmallows falling off conveyor belts, teeth, and poop piles. Luckily, you got those vitamins. Use orange beans when you reach the blaster. You can have that. Now it's like every other NES game, you just run the right blaster with it. Yeah, shoot that shit. Literally. The coconut trick still holds up. We gotta find the right spot. All right, here we go. <laughs> Well, rather anticlimactic, wouldn't you say? Then you go past some creepy gingerbread men who do absolutely nothing. Use a line beam to make a key. Key line, open the door. What the fuck is this? How did Blobber suddenly end up in a cage? And is this the Emperor? Why does he look like a pale job in a hut? But whatever, it's a final boss battle. This is it! Here we go! What happened? And the evil king is defeated with his own hidden supply of vitamins and all the blood will their savior? Did I win? Already? All I did was throw Blobber in an apple jelly bean. He turned into a jack and knocked over the jar of vitamins. Remember, vitamins are fatal to the Emperor. So if you were a villain and had a weakness, a bane, I could kill you. What would you do? Well, keep a bunch of nests at all times. Okay, who's this supposed to be? Those were a fuckface. What would you first take off? Official man. The game tells you nothing about him, but I assume he's the rightful king of Blobber. He was captured by the Emperor and you rescued him. And now he's free. He's gonna send his Blobber army to conquer Earth. Yeah, would that have been great ending? He said, Congratulations! You killed us all! Asshole! This doesn't feel like a complete game. It can be beaten in an incredibly short time, provided I know what to do and where to go. Just to point out how short this game really is. Every screen of the entire game is shown in only four pages of Nintendo Power. If they had more time, it would have been great to see more levels. The concept is very original with a lot of potential. The creative puzzle solving elements differentiate from other platforms on NES. Data Crane advanced the possibilities of gaming in the same way they've done with Pitfall. It may be heavily flawed, but the ingenuity shines through. It did, in fact, win Best of Show at the Consumer Electronics Show in 89 and received the Parents' Choice Award from the Parents' Choice Foundation in 1990, citing its positive human values. For example, always have a healthy diet with lots of variety, like the original Mellow Rubier and Cola Jelly Beans. There's things more important than money, and that's treasure chests and giant diamonds. The world best travel is the world where there's nothing and you have to turn back. Life is tough, life is unfair, so just cheat and roll that fucking coconut bowling ball. This game is something that could only exist in the 80s. After all, it's a game about jelly beans, which was the favorite candy of President Ronald Reagan. As a kid, I didn't know the difference between Ronald Reagan and Ronald McDonald, but the point is that's some 80s shit right there. And why do I close out with that game? This song, it may just be another obscure NES game, but others, it's remembered with great fondness. It's legacy continues, and whether they're conscious influences or not, I'm reminded of Blobber when I see adult swing cartoons like the character Switchface and Sea Life 2021, or Meepod and Optimus Hunter Force with his transforming capabilities. There's a new version of Boy's Blobber on the Wii, so it's very clear that it has been forgotten. Hopefully, it'll get another sequel or maybe even an animated series in the future. These are all the great ways to fulfill its potential. There's truly no other game like it. But maybe I'm being too positive here. I haven't broken a show or anything yet, so I'm gonna end by saying, fuck this game. <laughs> Alrighty, so I thought it was good. Reaction. I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. So, all right. Uh, my, I guess my uh, reaction is it's James is still funny. His reviews are still good, even after all these years. All right. The end. A very abrupt ending to that video, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, apparently does reactions for people who pay him £13. What an unlucky number. If if I paid him to do this, I, I would be wanting my money back. <laughs> or, or I would wait until the video was done before uh, thinking about paying him for it. Hell, I'd probably go and give that £13 to Cinemassacre. Anyway, that'll about do it for another episode of whatever that was. Today's takeaway, today's lesson, when reviewing content, editing is your friend. You can start to see why he's more successful watching other people's content than creating his own. It's screen after screen of nothing. Suspect is not armed, but his content is terrible.